As when I first discovered Isis Time when I was about 17, an art student in London, um, after I came back, having seen Strike, uh, which I believe is probably the world's first cinematic masterpiece, it took 31 years after 1895 to get there, but maybe that's not so surprising. People said, Einstein, Einstein, don't you mean Einstein? So the ignorance, and I rather suspect it's still around, it was really quite profound. Well, although the original project was my attempt to make a documentary of why his experiences in Mexico failed, I'm always interested in unmade films. You know, there are millions and millions of unmade films. Why are they unmade? I began to, I suppose documentary has a tendency to look at things very much from the outside, and I wanted to become more intimate and see things from the inside. I had known a huge amount about Eisenstein, not because I sat down and made notes, but just through osmosis, reading and looking and traveling to the places he'd been to. I started writing dialogue that he might have had with his experiences with people and places in Mexico, and that developed. So what started as a documentary, well, ends up, I suppose, as a feature film. But you can see all the origins, there's lots of reference to real life film, hundreds of photographs. I think Einstein was quite vain, he loved having his photograph taken. But also that gives it another sort of, um, you know, I, I like the concept of feature film as essay. I can't tell you the truth, if we ever knew the truth, about his relationship between Canada and himself. But there are bits and pieces of evidence, I didn't make it up. You may remember he has telephone conversations in the film with somebody called Pera Atashova who was his secretary indeed, it was a real-life relationship. I have to be careful now, having just debunked history, to talk about reality. Um, they had corresponded in a letter form, but making it into a telephone conversation was more cinematic and more dramatic, so that's why we did it. But I could conduct you to an archive in Moscow where all the letters still exist, and indeed he did, as it were, uh, opened himself up entirely and told her all sorts of details about this relationship. So despite Mr. Putin saying it's all false, sorry, I can show you what purports, at least as far as evidence can ever be evidence, and I don't think he made those letters up, the uh, circumstances of the drama can be proved to be very, very likely. When you go to a foreign country, you become a different person, don't you? You know, you don't have your relatives and your wife or Stalin breathing down your neck, so you can throw away some sort of self-censorship things. And I suppose, you know, not only in his um, professional filmic life, there are things I think about the footage he shot for Cave Even Mexico are not like anything, like the first three movies he made. But I think, you know, he's, he was always curious about his sexual predilections and where he stood. When he came to this city, he stayed here for seven, months, seven weeks on his, way to, um, on his way to America, he immediately went all around the sex shops and bought out literature, which he could never ever find, of course, in... Uh, in Russia. He was deeply interested. He desperately wanted to meet Freud. Uh, he never did. I think he got as close as Freud's daughter. I think he never actually met Freud. But he was interested in uh, you know, his whole sort of sexual activity. He studied very closely, you know, Freud's uh, examination of Leonardo da Vinci, who talked about a black bird flicking its tongue in his mouth. I don't know this is getting a bit recherche now, but all that sort of activity profoundly interested him. And I think by leaving Russia, you know, suddenly all the doors and windows open, which would never be possible in Stalinist Russia. And I do think, you know, our sexuality is really a key to a huge amount of our own personal activity. Yeah. You know, the cinema, the film goes on about Eros and Thanatos. I know nothing at all about you three gentlemen, but I do know two things. Two people fuck to make you, and I'm very sorry you're going to die. The rest <laughs> is an open book. <laughs>